Coming up on Ag Week TV, how grain and livestock producers can legally protect themselves from default when a deal goes bad. We'll take a look at the reason behind skyrocketing fertilizer prices. A former small town school is getting new life as a woolen mill and fiber arts center, among other things. And we feature a unique and very effective form of therapy using horses. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. Happy National Ag Week. We're celebrating here at the Central Plains Dairy Expo in Sioux Falls. The show went on hiatus last year due to the pandemic, but came back strong with nearly 300 exhibitors at the World Class Trade Show. It also features educational sessions on topics like genetics, reproductive health, dairy cow nutrition, and the roller coaster ride in the milk market the last year with the pandemic. The whole industry has been trying to, to figure out how to adapt and, and dairymen have done a great job really keeping their head down and just making milk every day. We did see that some of our exhibitors that were able to come back wanted larger footprints within the show floor. Um, also exciting to say that this year we have over 60 brand new exhibitors. The Dairy Focus Show attracts attendees from seven states. Fertilizer prices have skyrocketed in the last few months and are up 25 to 30 percent compared to last fall. Bob Larson with Nutrient Ag Solutions says it's a result of several factors, but mainly increased applications last fall with mild weather. We had a huge fall. I mean, just a, a record volume that hit the ground both in anhydrous phosphate and potash. We probably sold, call it 130 to 140 percent of normal. Other factors include higher corn prices and increased acreage expectations this spring. Plus nitrogen fertilizer production was stressed with the recent cold snap and surge in natural gas prices. And so we've seen some production issues with the freezing down south and, and all the things that are happening with plants down there that shut down for a week. And uh, it's a lot of volume that's going through these plants. Phosphate prices are also higher and potash prices are up 14% from last year. Larson says that's due to tight supplies as plants are trying to restock, but fighting logistical issues with the river froze up. UAN 28 is 30 percent higher than 2020 at an average of $306 per ton, while urea and anhydrous are up 28 percent. Anhydrous averaged $625 per ton nationally last week. Another factor that has pushed fertilizer values is the anticipation of an unfavorable ruling by the U.S. International Trade Commission on phosphate fertilizer imports from Russia and Morocco. The ITC found the imports were damaging to the U.S. market and is imposing countervailing duties over the next five years. Farm groups oppose that because it could further drive up prices by more than $80 per ton. It's one of those deals you want to keep them accountable, but yet you want to keep the prices down for, you know, for the American farmers, you know, to be growing the crops now. Without a legal or legislative remedy, farmers may have to use less fertilizer to cut costs, which will lower yields. The Canadian Pacific Railway and the Kansas City Southern have struck a merger agreement worth approximately $29 billion. The merger is awaiting approval from the Surface Transportation Board, but would create the first rail network connecting the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. An ag tech company is suing a South Dakota grain marketing company for what it says are grain contract violations of more than $8 million. Indigo Ag accuses fearless grain marketing of Oneida, South Dakota of fraud for failing to honor grain marketing contracts and other violations. Indigo was originated to develop markets for microbial technologies for treating crop seeds to improve yields. It isn't clear how many farmers are involved. The case is being heard in federal court in Memphis, Tennessee. Farmers often do business with a handshake, but unfortunately that can leave them vulnerable when a business defaults or a deal goes bad. Ag lawyer Todd Wilkinson talked about how producers can protect themselves on this week's Ag Week virtual farm show. He advises producers to know who they're doing business with. Have it in writing. If, if you're doing a deal and shaking hands across the back end of that pickup, and that's the extent of the, the agreement, when it goes bad, don't look to anybody else but yourself for the responsibility. 
The Ag Week Farm Show will also feature trade show booths and speakers on ag policy, feed costs, soil health, and specialty crops. I also hosted a market roundtable with Matt Bennett, Chip Nellinger, and Dwayne Bussey. It's all at agweek.com. The U.S. and Canada have developed a plan to minimize trade disruptions in the event of an African swine fever outbreak in feral swine. Upon ASF detection, all pork-related trade between both countries would halt and, according to protocols, would resume in three progressive phases. Speaking on the Ag Week Virtual Farm Show, SDSU's Bob Toller says one phase would allow movement in our region if there was an outbreak, for example, in North Carolina. And so uh, if we could demonstrate that in, in South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, and wherever else that we were free, that they would uh, allow marketing by region as long as you could document that, uh, that you were African swine fever free. Toller also offered tips for pork producers to manage higher feed costs, including using alternative feeds, feeder adjustments, and forward contracting ingredients. Coming up on Ag Week TV, you might be surprised at what's going on inside this former school. Here's a hint. It involves sheep, alpaca, and a whole bunch of other farm animals. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009, with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. The Elder Law Office of Julianne Kocher is dedicated to preserving your assets to protect your future. There are several options to preserve the family farm for your family and to prevent the loss to the government and to the rising costs of care. Call today to schedule your initial consultation or visit kocherlaw.com for additional information. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Welcome back. NDSU is offering a unique and very effective form of therapy using horses. Emily Beal has more on the Bison Strides Equine Therapy Program and its award-winning Therapy Horse Bronco in this week's Ag Week cover story. She feels like she's a superstar when she's on Bronco. Bronco is the favorite therapy horse of Elizabeth Tanquist's daughter, Greta. Greta is part of NDSU's Bison Strides Equine Therapy Program. She says it teaches physical and mental skills like giving and taking directions. The great thing about it is it's a therapy that doesn't feel like a therapy for her. All of that strengthens her core, her thinking, her processing. So it's really using the body in a real total experience for therapy. The Bison Strides Therapy Program has been offered at NDSU's equine facility since 2017. It doesn't look like traditional therapy, because it isn't. 
Erica Berg is an associate professor of animal science and the program director of this unique therapy. We serve individuals with physical, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral challenges. NDSU partners with Beyond Boundaries Therapy for this program. The physical therapists say their clients love this unique treatment. It's just an intensive uh, form of therapy that really accentuates the vestibular system, the sensory systems, the emotional regulation of the client. The um, experience that the horse gives is unlike anything I can provide in the clinic. So whether it's the rhythmical movement that helps coordinate and regulate our sensory systems, the warmth of the horse, being able to be gentle, um, to communicate, all of those skills that we need in everyday life. Bison Strides is made up of three programs, including one for military and veterans, and plans to add a fourth this summer for young people. Berg says the need is high, so they're hoping to expand their arena space. In Fargo, this is Emily Beal for Ag Week. And you can read more at agweek or agweek.com. Empty rural schools dot the prairies, mostly falling into disrepair. But one in eastern North Dakota is seeing new life as a fiber arts center. And as Rose Dunn found, the women building it are expecting woolcraft enthusiasts from all over the world. Uh. Teresa Perleberg's herd started as a small family hobby of four sheep in 2005. I wanted to learn how to spin wool into yarn, which I did. The herd has grown to 125, and Perleberg uses the wool for her fiber arts business, Bear Creek Felting. She started selling these needle felting kits online in 2008. They're extremely popular, and that led to an online felting academy to demonstrate for customers around the world how to put them together. It was just like the perfect medium for me when I found it, and everything just clicked. Chris Armbrust's Dakota Fiber Mill processed the wool from Teresa's sheep and others around the country, but both women were outgrowing their home-based operations, so they started looking for a place to build their businesses together. I, myself, was busting at the seams. I was not even taking new customers in. I had to add machines, but I had no space, so I had to build. The Gnome School was built in 1916, and the gym was added in 1949. It last saw students in 1970. It had seen some use off and on over the years, but was sitting empty and had definitely fallen into disrepair when Chris and Teresa found it. But they saw its potential right away. We never thought that a new building would have as much character or history or as much support from the community. We are so glad that we found the school here in Nome. Armbrist started processing the wool from her own alpacas about 12 years ago, and then wool started coming in from around the country. So she's moving her industrial mill to this large addition to the school. You name it, I've processed it. The bulk of the business is sheep. Besides retail and class space, the school will also feature a dining room and events center with a chef on site and an 11-room boutique hotel. They also plan to have a variety of wool-bearing animals in the barn out back. It's real North Dakota. You'll be looking out on sheep grazing as you're eating in the dining room, and it'll be a true experience. Perleberg and Armbrust have customers all over the world, and some are already planning a trip to the schoolhouse to see how it's done. In Nome, North Dakota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. Their official grand opening is July 1st. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll talk turkey as our livestock tour continues. And later, we'll show you where livestock processing is increasing. Assisting farmers is our passion. Through ABC Drones, we are able to spray corn, soybeans, alfalfa, CRP, and other crops. ABC Drones also has the capabilities to reach difficult areas of your farmland to spread fertilizer and seed. Call us today at 507-701-1483 or visit abcdronesllc.com to learn more about how our drone services can help you. life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Salty soils? Meet Calcy, one of the quickest and most effective way to fix salty soils. 
It's natural, it's easy to use, and most importantly, it works. On sodic soils, on saline soils, on all soils. Put calcium to work, leaching salt below the root zone and out of your field, resulting in less compaction, better irrigation, improved health, and lots of these guys for your soil. And higher quality forage, greater yields, and lower bottom line production costs for you. With more than 20 years of use in the industry and a proven track record of bringing life back to challenging soils, you can trust Calcine to ensure your fields are their most productive. Calcine, let's create healthier soils. To learn more about how Calcine can improve the productivity of your fields, contact Jim Erickson or visit calcine.us. At Express Pressure Washers, you aren't just buying a machine. When we started this business, our only goal was to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. That's why you're buying a team along with your machine. A team who will work hard to make sure your machine performs and works as hard as you do. Express Pressure Washers is driven by service and supported by sales. Give us a call today or go online to expresspressurewashers.com. The region continued to see welcome moisture this week, except in the far north. How long will this pattern last? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Spring March is on. Good thing, bad thing. Well, it depends on the rainfall. The early spring does have dry weather concerns surrounding, especially in the northern plains, the Great Plains area. It's been a very dry fall, dry winter, so far a dry spring. Some are about to happen. There are concerns, of course, that this would lead into some sort of drought by the time we get to summertime. Dry weather is widespread over the southwest. Just wasn't much snowfall this winter, not much rain either. Here in the northern plains, we've got some very dry weather across the Dakotas, getting a little bit less dry into Minnesota. The U.S. Drought Monitor is looking at the deep moisture profile. So some parts of this area, Red River Valley, Minnesota, down and through Iowa, feel are wet with the winter snow melt, but that can change quickly. And with this pattern, we will see some of that. Early this week, a quick surge of warm temperatures that won't last but about a day. This trough will bring a sharp cold front to the area midweek and we'll get some cool weather. The warm weather, though, will linger across the south. And as we go through the week, the next surge of warm air is likely. By this warm stuff, I'm talking temperatures in the 70s. As far north as North Dakota and Minnesota by this weekend, looks like it's going to actually linger that way way for a while. And then as we get on into April, uh, look at this. It's going to stay pretty warm, courtesy of this ridge of high pressure into the northern plains. Uh, a weather pattern that favors a lot of warm days, but also does not favor much threat chance for precipitation. The next uh, week or so, March 28th through April 3rd, I look for little to no rain or snow, nothing more than a sprinkle here and there in the northern plains. The rain will be along the eastern seaboard. And as we look at the second week now, April 4th through 10th, I look for most of the United States to be dry, not necessarily without any precipitation, but it just doesn't look like there's going to be very much. And I've already told you the last several weeks how we're looking at April being in general a warm, dry month. So there's going to be opportunity as the evaporation begins to increase with warmer temperatures that will start getting some moisture deficits and these fields are going to start drying out for spring planting. So what's the summer going to bring? Well, this is an early look. This comes from the uh, National Oceanic and Atmosphere Spheric Administration. It's basically the long lead uh, climate prediction center forecast for the summer. And this is dealing with likelihoods, not certainties. After all, it, it was a forecast to likely be a cold winter, and for the most part, it wasn't. But we're looking at most likely much warmer than average over the Rocky Mountains and the Western High Plains, and fairly likely to be warmer than average across the Corn Belt. Dry weather likely in the Northern Plains. It looks like the wet weather this year will be along the East Coast. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage 
Business Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at stephasgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Operation Dignity International advocates for increased wages, health care, and education in Ghana, West Africa. They develop land opportunities to ease poverty and increase opportunities for many small villages, and to change the outcome for many people who deserve to hope, dream, and live a thriving life of dignity and possibilities. Contact us to see how you can get involved today. The Ag Week Livestock Tour is sponsored by Transova and the Stockman's Livestock Exchange. Our Ag Week Livestock Tour continues with a visit to a turkey grower who raises organic and traditional birds. Emily Beal takes a look at how COVID has affected their operation. So Charlene, do you want to kind of start off by telling me um, what kind of producer you are and a little bit about your operation? We do mostly hand turkeys and um, in our production we will do organic we also do uh, antibiotic free and then we, used to, we have some birds that are conventional which means that we can treat them. And how many birds do you have on location? Right now we have uh, 54,000. So we just got babies this morning. How long is that growing process? How long are they on your place for? The birds um, will go from anywhere from 13 to 16 weeks. Um, if the, the plant and sales on a product that is a lighter bird then we'll take them in at 13 weeks and if they need a heavier hen or heavier bird then we'll go up to 16. We are contracted, we process with Northern Pride of Thief River Falls, Minnesota. We are about 90 to 95% sold out. How has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted your production here? The processing plant last year opted to take a lot of our heavy hens earlier so they didn't get as heavy. There's been a great demand, especially for whole body birds, especially with this COVID and with the season. Um, they want a smaller size bird and more people are cooking at home. Thanks Charlene. With Ag Week, I'm Emily Beal in Wymere, North Dakota. With parts of the region experiencing drought since last year, producers should be aware of how the dry conditions can affect their livestock's water quality. Less runoff and lower water levels mean concentrated salts and sulfates that can make the water more toxic to livestock. Livestock environmental specialist Miranda Meehan advises producers to check the solids in their waters regularly with the TDS monitor because once we get above 5,000 for TDS, we start seeing some livestock health concerns. Um, re reduced intake is the first thing we see. But then when we get above 5,000 and 7,000, we see impacts to lactating and pregnant, pregnant animals. And above 10,000, it's deadly. She says your local extension office has TDS monitors and sulfate strips you can use to monitor your water. The beef processing industry is expanding in both Iowa and Nebraska, positively adding to the nation's kill capacity. National Beef Packing is investing more than $100 million to increase processing capacity at the Tama, Iowa plant. They'll double daily capacity to 2,500 head. The completion date is set for late 2022. Plus, a group of cattle producers and investors are planning a small regional beef plant in North Platte, Nebraska. Sustainable Beef is building a nearly $300 million plant to slaughter 1,500 head per day. They hope to break ground this fall and begin plant operations in early 2023. 
Still ahead on Ag Week TV, North Dakota gets a royal visit. Schedule an uptime inspection for your equipment with the Case IH service professionals at your local Tight Machinery. Our Case IH certified service technicians have the training, experience, and genuine Case IH parts to ensure your equipment is ready for next season. Planting and harvesting windows are short. Have confidence in your equipment's performance with a Titan Machinery multi-point uptime inspection. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH service leader. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. The future of your farm depends on storage, and no one does storage solutions better than Gateway Building Systems. Gateway Building Systems is the number one Brock Bend dealer in the U.S., is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Gateway Building Systems will provide you with Brock Solid bins, grain dryers, millwright services, lags, towers, and conveyors. Take advantage of discounts on our Brock Solid bins. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com. At Wagner Ayler, we understand the business of today's farmers. Our attorneys work with family farms, dairy operations, swine integrators, and seed and implement dealers every day. We collaborate with trusted farm advisors to ensure you achieve your goals. Wagner Ayler LTD is committed to providing exceptional legal advice to allow you to focus on growing your farm. Call 507-288-5567 to schedule an initial meeting. Miss Rodeo America, Jordan Tierney, visited the North Dakota Winter Show this year. She grew up on a ranch near Oral, South Dakota, and comes from a rodeo family. She considers the title an honor, but also the chance to be an important voice for ag. Standing firm in agriculture, and that is, you know, just how to equip people with the ability to speak on, you know, touchy subjects, how to handle people that, you know, might want to tear down what you, your livelihood is and how to fight back. Because so many events were canceled over the past year, including the Miss Rodeo America pageant, Jordan is the first queen ever to serve for two years. Thanks to everyone that joined us for this week's Ag Week virtual farm show. However, if you missed any of our speakers, you can view those at agweek.com. Also take the Ag Week survey for a chance to win $250. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.